let's begin by setting up a new Mari project. So let's go ahead and start our new project. So in the projects tab, we'll go ahead and just say new. And we can call this something like creature. And we need to find the geometry that we're going to be using. And this is going to be located in your project files. So we'll go ahead and search for that. So we have a folder called geometry. So we'll go ahead and look in there. And there's going to be a creature underscore model dot obj. And this is the sort of alien creature that we're going to be using for our project. So we'll go ahead and click on that and say open. That'll put that into our geometry path here. Then we need to decide what uh, textures we want to actually create. So we want to have a color. So we'll go create, and that's going to be a new texture. So we don't have an existing texture that we want to import. And we can go ahead and set the size on that. I'm going to go ahead and work at 4K. The textures that we distribute, uh, we may distribute at a lower resolution. But for now, we'll go ahead and just work at 4K to get a nice high resolution image. And uh, let us see how many of these high resolution textures we can work at with work on at one time in Mari. And we're going to be using a displacement up, but I'm going to go ahead and add that later. So I'll go ahead and just create this based on this naming template. And go ahead and say OK to that. So that's going to load up our geometry into a new project. It's going to create a channel for the color. And it's going to have the same number of patches that our model has UV tile. So we let go ahead and let this think for a second. So here's our geometry uh, loaded up here. And so now if we go over to channels over here in the palette here, you can see that we have a color channel that we've created. If we go ahead and look at the UVs, you can see that we have a number of different patches. So this creature separated into all these separate patches. You can see the numbering uh, here and also the resolution of each of these patches. Okay, and that's going to help us get some nice high resolution textures on this guy. And so uh, right now we just have the color channel, but uh, even though he's pretty high res, I still have a displacement that I want to bring in to get some of this high resolution sculpted detail uh, shown here. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add a channel preset. So we'll go and click on this. And now I'm going to import for all patches. And the patches and the images should be the same size but we will resize the patches to fit the images if anything's different. It shouldn't be. And so we'll go ahead and say I want to import this displacement. It's a scalar type. And now I want to go find the file that I want to import. So we'll go ahead and click on this button and open up our import window here and again navigate to our project files and you'll find under textures, the textures folder uh, is going to be an image called alien full displace find and this actually is if you look at it in your explorer you'll get, you're going to see it's a made up of multiple images and this is one texture that is across 37 patches so it's a bunch of different texture files that Mari's going to treat as uh, one channel here so we'll go ahead and open that up that's going to import that into all of those different patches so we'll say okay to that it's going to go through the process of loading up those images. So it's, a, again, more than one texture. It's really multiple images spread over a number of different patches, each with their own identification. If you don't have too much experience with Mari, uh, we encourage you to go through the Beginner's Guide to Mari and also the Introduction to Mari uh, to get a better feel of some of the tools and, and uh, how Mari works with the UV. So we won't go uh, into that too much. So we'll just let this go ahead and load up. That will give us, you can see it's already listed here, the displacement. You can name this anything you want, uh, bump, displacement, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we can take a look at that, what that looks like here as it loads up. And then we'll add a shader as well. So go ahead and let this finish up. Now we, we looked at the UVs with our color uh, channel, but you didn't really see too much because they're there's not really any color detail. Now there is some detail in the displacement channel, so it'll give us a better idea of what all these pieces are. So it doesn't look too much different. You can see that if I switch channels that I can see kind of a change come on the model. You can see some of this detail. And so what it's doing is really just displaying that channel mapped onto our model, whatever channel I have chosen. If I go into the UV tab, you can see this is our displacement. These are all separate texture files that we just loaded up simultaneously here. Okay, so what we want to do is use the color as our color and we want to see the displacement as sort of a bump 
And so to do that, we need to modify the shader. The shader is going to help us to define how, how we're going to view our channel. So right now we just have a default shader. We can go ahead and create a new shader just by hitting the little plus button here. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this something like that, creature shader. All right, and then I need to be able to see in here. And because of our limited screen space, I want to try to pull this up a bit so we can see it. So you can see inside our shader right now, we just have a base diffuse, which is the color that we're seeing. And right now it's using the current channel, but we have an explicit channel that we want to use instead of just whatever channel we have selected at the, t at the uh, moment. So we'll go ahead and select color for the base diffuse, and then we want to add a new shader module. And for this, let's go ahead and add a bump. This is going to um, allow us to see our displacement as a bump. So we'll add a new shader module within this shader. And so now we have a bump, and you can see it's displacement preview. So for the texture on this, again, we'll switch this from current channel. This time we'll choose displacement, fine. And then we can change the bump weight. So you can see as I change that weight, you can see a little bit more of that detail coming through. So at any time you can modify this value. I'll just kind of set it kind of up here, and then you can kind of see the difference. Let me set it down a little bit more. You kind of see the difference with and without. So this is the this channel is actually going to be a great guide for us. We'll not only be able to see some of these uh, bumps and things that we aren't in the high resolution, but also we can use this as kind of a painting guide and also kind of layer it on top of some of the color that we create to get some different effects. Okay, and so now when we go in here, um, it doesn't really matter what channel we select. We're still seeing the same thing now. If you are working and you want to actually be able to see whatever channel you're working on, you can just click over to the default shader at any time, and then whatever channel you happen to be viewing, you'll see that. Otherwise, on the creature shader, it has a specific setup where it's piping the color in to the diffuse and the displacement into the bump. Okay, so now that we've got uh, that set up, I want to do one more thing in this lesson, and uh, that is to... Uh, calculate our ambient occlusion for this. So I'm going to go in and add a new palette here. So I'm going to go to View, Palettes, and let's get our Objects palette. I'm going to dock it right down here. Okay, so this allows us to see our object here, which is our creature model. And I'm going to just right click on this and say uh, Ambient Occlusion. That's going to go through the process of calculating our ambient occlusion, which will then view using our shader. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click on that. All right, now let's calculate. It did take a minute or two, but now that we have that ambient inclusion calculated, we can go into our shader, our creature shader, go into the lighting section here, and you can see we have a section for ambient occlusion. We can dial that up, and you can see it's using that ambient occlusion that we've calculated to display our model so that we can get a little bit of a nicer display of it as we paint. Now you can always dial that up or down as you desire. Okay, we can also use that name occlusion later for some masking if we want to mask that off based on the occlusion. We can also change our uh, specular in here. So we can change the amount of specular gain here. And then the roughness, if we take that down, you can see it makes it more shiny. So we can make that really glossy and maybe then take that down a little bit. Okay, and again, these are just kind of for display here when working on our mesh and we can also are working on our textures we can also create channels to drive the specular gain and specular roughness as well okay so once we've got our shader set up and uh, we'll go ahead and stop at this point and then in the next lesson come in and modify our interface and get ready to to work on our project a little bit more now if you're more familiar with mari again you can skip over some of these lessons uh, until we get to actually painting so uh, we'll go ahead in the next lesson and continue setting up our project